What's up guys? Frankie Fennel here and I'm switching from a carnivore diet to a more plant-based diet. The reason for this is the lipid hypothesis, the idea that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease was originally based off of a study done on rabbits in the early 1900s. What they did was they injected rabbits with cholesterol and they saw that the rabbits got heart disease. So I figured that since the whole lipid hypothesis and the USDA dietary guidelines are based off of rabbit studies, we should look at what rabbits are eating and base our diets around that. And rabbits eat plenty of feces. We see this in various members of the ape family as well. And this is because these animals don't have a rumen a digestive system found specifically in ruminant animals. When apes and monkeys throw their poop at you, they are literally telling you to eat their nutrition. These animals, these apes in the zoo, they see that you're eating food and you're not getting your nutrition because you're not eating your own poop. The fact that these monkeys are throwing their poop at you is like the highest form of respect. They're, they're giving you nutrition that they would normally save for themselves. They're giving it to you. It, it's amazing that we literally flush our nutrition down the toilet. It's so evident in rabbits and apes, all of these herbivorous animals, that they are eating their own species and that we should be doing so as well. Not only are there these anecdotes in nature, all of this evidence, and all of this logical reason to eat our own poop. I mean, it's, it's pre-digested nutrition. The plant food goes through our digestive system, and the waste is more available. Here we have several studies. So, the first study that we can look at is coprophagy in rabbits. And what this basically goes over is that rabbits have two types of feces, soft and hard feces. The soft feces is more nutrient-dense, it's higher in vitamins and minerals. And the heart feces is for digestive regularity. And both of them seem to be necessary, uh, necessity for the diet. Roughly equal parts soft and hard feces, uh, to my understanding. So we can speculate that there is an ideal ratio of this soft to hard feces, but how can we ensure that our body produces equal amounts of soft and hard feces? This is a theory I developed from another study colonic formation of soft feces and rabbits, a role for endogenous prostaglandins. So this goes over how feces is produced in circadian rhythm, the sun's natural cycle. So what we can tell from this study is that optimizing hormonal balance through sleep cycles aligned with circadian rhythm achieves proper ratio of soft to hard feces production. So Guys, every element of your lifestyle is important here. If you're not eating well, if you're not sleeping properly, your hormones are going to be off. And you're not going to have adequate production of both soft and hard feces. The next study, Nutrition of the Domestic Rabbit, essentially goes over how unique rabbit's digestive systems are in the sense that they are similar to humans because they can't digest fiber. Their ability is very low, yet they still subsist on a vegan plant-based diet. It's very evident the way that these rabbits eat, they don't digest fiber. Therefore, we as humans who do not digest fiber and we don't have the enzymes to break down cellulose, we should be consuming fecal matter 100%. No questions asked. The final study, molecular analysis of the microbiome in heart feces from healthy rabbits medicated with long-term oral meloxicam, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. But what this tells us is that despite reducing inflammation in the gut, their digestive systems were not altered if they were consuming feces. This illustrates the importance of the microbiome and how if we have adequate feces ingestion, the inflammation will not be altered by outside factors in the diet, like antibiotics and drugs. Uh, this essentially means if you're following a plant-based diet, you're consuming your own feces, your inflammation is going to essentially be as low as possible.
Now, I know a lot of people are averse to the smell, and yes, the smell is bad, but if you're following a proper plant-based diet, low in fats, high in whole foods, you will have pleasant, clean-smelling bowel movements, varying equally between heart and thought feces. So not only is it pleasant tasting with a nice texture, if you follow the diet properly, you don't have to worry about the smell either. I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, maybe I could put this into my steak in the morning, but we don't want to compromise the texture by blending this up. It may compromise its digestive benefits, and this is especially because rabbits don't consume water themselves. So you don't want to consume water with the feces. If we're replicating the rabbit's diet, we have to replicate all aspects of the rabbit's lifestyle. If we blend up the, the rabbit's feces with flaxseed and water and all of these things, we're compromising the natural life cycle that we are supposed to truly be following. As I said guys, plenty of evidence in nature, scientific mechanisms, and logic oriented around these ideas. I'll put these studies down in the comments and I'm sure there will be a lot of positive input from the current vegan community on these ideas. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys like the video, uh, please subscribe. Uh, hit hit the bell icon if, if you don't mind. And uh, and, and share the video uh, if, if you want to. You don't have to. Um, if you guys do want to support me, um, the pay, pay, Patreon is a great way to do that. So, uh, if, if you do want personalized question support, I, you can check out my Patreon. Uh, my Amazon shop has a, a bunch of kitchen equipment that you could possibly use to cut up the feces. Uh, I'm on Instagram, guys. I'm on Twitter. Uh, if you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to uh, incorporating feces into your diet and optimizing your overall health, uh, you can send me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com. Or reach out to me through the contact form on my website below, frankdesktofano.com. You guys enjoy the rest of the weekend.